implementing depth for search in a binary tree and different traversals that is pre-order, in-order and post-order traversals. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll talk about how to perform depth for search in a binary tree and then write traversals like pre-order, in-order and post-order using DFS. So let's see everything that we have already covered in the previous videos. We started with an introduction to trees. We talked about various basic concepts there. Then we implemented a binary tree in Java. We used this implementation to implement breadth first search and level order traversal. So please check out these videos to build some basic understanding about trees if you need to. Now in this video, after breadth first search, it's time for depth first search and then we'll extend it to implement different traversals. All of this will use the basic binary tree implementation that we have created in Java. So please check out that video so that you can follow along with me. So let's start with depth for search and what it means. As the name sounds, in depth for search, you go as deep as possible in a path and then you backtrack your way back to other branches and you keep doing that until you visit all of the nodes in the tree. It's very similar to how you'd explore a maze. And actually, let's visualize how does that look like for a maze. Here you can see we have an opening on the top and an exit on the bottom. So if you had to explore this, you get in from the top. And then if you start to explore paths from left to right, we start heading towards left. And we keep going until we hit a dead end. Now you went as deep as you could in the maze on the left side. Now naturally, you'll start to go back, which is backtracking. And then you take the next path that's unexplored. So in this case, we start going towards right and then deeper into the maze. And we keep going again until we hit a dead end. Well, it's time to backtrack again. So we keep going back until we find another possible path to explore. Here we see we can start going towards right and find another path. So we start going there. And lucky for us, we found a way out. But let's say we had to explore all the paths of the maze. So you'll backtrack your way back all the way to the next unexplored path which is right here. So now in this case, you start going more towards right until you hit another dead end. Now backtracking again and exploring the next path. We hit a dead end, so we backtrack again and go to the next path. We hit a dead end yet again, so backtrack and keep exploring. And that's it. Now if you backtrack all the way, we have no other unexplored path. And this is what basically DFS is. So let's see how this looks in context of a tree. So we have a tree here and we start from node 1. We start going down a path. Let's start with left. So we go from 1 to 2, then from 2 to 4, and then there is no other path to keep going. So now we backtrack. We go from 4 to 2 and then from 2 to 1. Now on 1, we know that we still haven't explored the path towards 3. So we start going towards it. Now here we have two paths, either towards 5 or 6. And following the convention of going from left to right, let's go towards 5 first. Now here, we don't have any left child, so the only option is to go towards 7. And now we can't go any deeper, so it's time to backtrack. So we go back to 5. Now at 5, we've explored everything, so we go back at 3. Now at 3, we still have a path towards the 6th node, which is not explored yet, so we go to 6. Now there's nothing else to explore at 6, so we start to backtrack. So from 6, we go to 3, and then to 1. Now once we reach 1, we see we've explored all the path that was available to us. And that's all there is to depth first search. Now I know that the algorithm says depth first search. So when you go through all the paths, you would have a mission in mind. In this case, which will be searching for a node. So let's say you found your node, then you'll stop your depth first search and end the program. So before we jump into the algorithm for depth first search, let's see what kind of interview questions you can expect. Well, the first one is very straightforward. You could be given a binary tree and you could be asked to find or process nodes using DFS. Or, as we saw, you could be asked to find a solution for a given maze. And DFS is just a base concept, and there's so many other complex interview questions that actually use DFS to solve them, such as pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversal that we'll see in this video. And then other fun questions like finding sums for all the paths that exist on a tree, finding closest common ancestor given a set of nodes, finding if a tree is symmetric, and so many more. And we'll cover all of these questions one by one in this channel. So let's see how does the algorithm look like for depth for search. So for depth for search, we'll be using recursion. We start by defining a tree, which will be a new binary tree. 
And then we call a DFS method with the root of the tree because that's where all the traversals start from. And this is how the DFS method looks like. Now in recursion, we always need a base case. In this case, if the current node that is passed to this function, which is right here, is null, then there's nothing to do because there's no path to explore from a null node. So you just return back the control as there's nothing to do here. But if the current node is not null, then you'll perform whatever operation you want to do at the current node. That could be searching or any complex algorithm that you might want to run here. And then you recursively call the DFS method for the left child of the current node and for the right child of the current node. Now, these three operations, they can be shuffled and you can have it in whatever order you want. And that's how all the different traversals that we'll talk about, which is the pre-order, in-order and post-order traversals come from. But before that, let's implement a very basic depth first search. Let's jump into our IDE. So I have a project created here that uses the basic binary tree implementation that we have from our past video. And if you remember, we had a binary tree package where we had two classes, binary tree and node. And to implement DFS, we'll add a new method to this binary tree class, which will be right here. And before we continue, let's make sure that this program runs. And as you can see, we get a nice beautiful tree output using our util tree view printer class that we had. So let's jump into the binary tree class and implement our DFS method. So let's start by defining how the signature would look like for the DFS function. So it has to be a public method, keep it as void for now and call it as DFS. Now this needs a node as an input because that's where we are processing. So that could be final node and we can call it current node. Then if you remember, first we need a base case for our recursion here. And the base case is if current node is null, then there's nothing to do and we just return. Otherwise, we process the node. In this case, let's say we just print it. So that'll be current node dot value. And then we call DFS for the left subtree, which is current node dot left. And do the same for the right tree, which is current node dot right. Great, now let's call this method from our main method here. So we'll basically do binary tree dot DFS and give it the root of the binary tree. Okay, now let's run this. As expected, it's going through all of these nodes in a depth first fashion and printing them out. And we can see it starts from one. That's why we have one as the output first. It goes all the way deep in two and four, which we see as the next output. Then it goes towards three, five and seven, which is right here. And then at the end, it prints six. Going back to our DFS function, we need to modify this a little. Right now, it's basically traversing and printing all the values of the nodes of the tree. But this stands for depth for search. So shouldn't we be searching for something? Well, let's see how that will look like. So here we can have a second input for the value that we are searching. So we can take that input as final integer value. And instead of printing, now we can check if the node's value matches the value. So that will be if current node dot value is equal to value, then we can return some kind of an assertion that yes, we found the value that we are looking for. So we can maybe return a true, but our method is defined as void. So we need to change that as to Boolean. Similarly, for the base case, instead of returning nothing, now we have to return false because the current node is null. So it cannot be the value we are looking for. So let's see how will this look like. So let's say if this condition didn't match, that the current node is not the value we are searching for. Then if the left or the right subtree has that node, we should return true. That is, if any of the subtree has the node value that we're looking for, then we return true. So in this case, we can change this into a return statement and make this as an or statement. And also, we need to pass the value that we're searching for. And let's update the usage of DFS in our main method. So here, right now, we were just passing the root of the binary tree. Now we'll also pass the value that we are searching for. So let's say we are searching for five and let's print the value of this whole method call. 
So I'll wrap this inside a system out. Okay, let's run this program. Now here we're expecting this to be true because five is part of the binary tree here and we can see it says true. Now what if we pass minus five here? Now minus five is not part of the tree, so we're expecting a false now, which is what we got. Now, just a bonus refactor. BFS is a property of binary tree, so it doesn't make sense to pass the root of this binary tree because DFS should know what the root is because it's property of the binary tree itself. So let's see how we can refactor this. So going back to our DFS method here, we will definitely have to keep this function as is because DFS needs to pass the next node that we're working on. But we can make this private for now. And we can expose another method. Let's say public boolean DFS, which is what we had before. And we only pass the value that we are searching for. Now in this case, because we already know what the root of the binary tree is, all we have to do is call this DFS method, which takes in the current node and pass the root of the tree that we already have in this class and then the value that was passed to us from the main method and of course we should return the value that is returned by dfs now going back to our main method here i guess we can remove binary tree dot root because it picks the root from the binary tree object for which we are calling this method on so now let's run this program again and see if nothing changes yes we got false as we expected for minus five now changing this to 5 and running this again, we should expect a true. And yes, we do get a true. And this is much more cleaner than what we had before. Next, let's talk about all the traversals. That is pre-order, in-order and post-order. I'm sure I've said this many times by now. So as I mentioned earlier, when you write DFS, there's so many ways to traverse. When we wrote our program, we saw we were either processing the current node or we were calling DFS for the left subtree or the right subtree. And you can generate all kinds of permutations, which gives rise to three options for traversing. Hopefully this is the last time I'm saying this, which is pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversals. So let's start with pre-order. In pre-order, you always process yourself first, that is the current node. And this is sort of indicated by the word pre, that means I come first. And then you process the left subtree and then the right subtree. So in a diagram, you can see we have broken down the tree into three parts, which is current node, left subtree, and right subtree. So following the order of processing, first you process the current node, then you process the left subtree, and then you process the right subtree. And let's take a look at an example. We have a tree here, and let's see how pre-order traversal looks like for this. So you start at node one, which is the root of the tree. And as pre-order says, process yourself first. In all of our examples, by processing will imply that it means printing the value, though it could be any processing that you want to do on the node. So we start with the root and we print it, which will be one. Then you go towards the left subtree, which is at two. Now at two, you process yourself first. So you print two. Then you again go to the left subtree, which is four. And you print four, which is yourself. Now four doesn't have a left or right subtree, so it's time to backtrack. So we go back to two. Now two doesn't have any right subtree, so there's nothing else to do here, and we backtrack back to one. Now here, we have processed ourselves, we have processed the left subtree, now it's time to go into the right subtree. So we go towards node three. Now here, you process yourself, so you print three, and then you go towards the left subtree, which is at node five. Now at five, you process yourself, which is printing five, and then there's no left subtree, so you go towards the right subtree, which is at seven. Now at seven, you print yourself. Now there's nothing else to do at seven, so you start to backtrack. You go to five, there's nothing else to do at five, so you go back to three. Now at three, we still have the right subtree, which is at six, so we go there. And we print six, because we have to process ourselves. Now at six, there's nothing else to do, so backtrack to three. At three, we've done everything, backtrack to one, and the traversal finally ends here because at one, we have nothing else to do. Now following the same model, let's look at the other two traversals. So the next one we have is in order traversal. In here, you process the left subtree first and then you process the current node and then you process the right subtree. Now I remember this by the word in, in the in order traversal. 
it sounds like everything has to be in order and when I think about it, it goes from left to right. So you start with left, then you come to yourself and then you go towards right. And let's take a look at an example again. So here we start at node one, but this time we don't process yourself first. You go towards the left subtree, so you go towards two. Now again, we don't process ourselves and we go towards the left subtree, which is at four. Now four doesn't have any left subtree, so it's time to process ourselves. So we print four. Now four doesn't have a right subtree, so it's time to backtrack back to two. Now at two, we have processed the left subtree, so it's time to process yourself, which gives us two. And then there's no right subtree, so we backtrack again to one. Now at one, the left subtree is processed, so it's time to process yourself. So you print one. And then we head towards the right subtree, which roots at three. Now at three, we go towards the left subtree, which is at five. Five doesn't have a left subtree, so it processes itself and prints five. Then it goes towards the right subtree, which is at seven, and seven prints itself. Now it's time to backtrack, as there is nothing else to do at seven. So we go back to five. At five, there's nothing else left to do, so we go back to three. Now at three, the left subtree has been processed, so three prints itself. And then we go towards the right subtree, which is at six. Now six has no left subtree, so it can process itself and print out. And it has no right subtree, so it starts to backtrack to three. Now at three, everything is processed, so backtrack to one, and we are done. Now let's take a look at the last one, which is post order traversal. Now in post order, you start with the left subtree first, then you process the right subtree, and then you process yourself. And again, it's indicated by the word post, meaning you come towards the end after left and right is processed. Again, let's take a look at the example. So we start at the root of the tree, which is one. We go towards the left and then we keep going all the way towards the left and we hit four. Now at four, there's no left or right subtree. So it's time to process yourself. So we print four. Now we backtrack to two. At two, there's no right subtree. So you process yourself and you print two. Now backtracking back to one. Now at one, we process the left subtree. So it's time to go towards the right subtree, which is at three. At three, we go towards the left subtree. At five, we have no left subtree. So we go towards the right subtree, which is seven. At seven, there are no subtrees. So seven just prints itself. Then we backtrack back to five. Now five processed the only subtree it had, which was seven. So it prints itself next, which is five. Then we backtrack to three. Now three has a right subtree. So we go towards it first. So we go to six. Now six doesn't have any subtree, so it prints itself, which will give us six. Now from six, we backtrack to three because left and right subtree for three has been processed. Three can now print itself. And then we go back to one. And now that one has processed its left and right subtree, it can finally process itself and print out one. I'll suggest practicing all of these traversals on different trees by yourself, just so that you have a grasp on all the kind of traversals that we just saw. And hey, we'll write a program for this so you can validate your answers programmatically. So let's jump into our IDE now and implement all of these three traversals. Okay, so now let's implement all the traversals that we just talked about. And as usual, we'll go to the binary tree class and we'll start implementing it here. So let's start with the pre-order traversal first. So we'll make this a public method, which returns nothing as we're only printing the values out. Let's name this as pre-order, which can take the current node as the input. And as usual, like DFS, we'll copy this base case. If the current node is null, then there's nothing to do and we return the control of the program. Otherwise, we print the current value of the current node as we have to first process ourselves for pre-order traversal. Next, we call pre-order traversal for the left subtree and then call pre-order traversal for the right subtree. Well, let's call this method from our main method now. So going back to our main method, we don't need this system out. So we can simply do binary tree dot pre-order and then pass in the root of the binary tree. Okay, now let's run this program. Perfect. Now here we can see the pre-order traversal for this given tree. And let's match the output to what we expect. 
So for pre-order, you first process yourself. So we printed one, go to left subtree, we printed two next. Then again, we went to the left subtree, we printed four. Then we back right all the way to the top and then go towards the right subtree, which is at three. We printed that. We went to the left subtree now, process yourself, which will be five. There's no left subtree here. So we go towards the right, which is seven. It prints itself. We backtrack all the way towards the right subtree at three, which is six. And we print that. So this is our basic pre-order traversal. Okay, so now let's go back to our binary tree and implement in order traversal. I'm going to be a lazy developer and I'm going to copy this. And I'll rename this to in order traversal. And all we have to do is move this processing of yourself right after processing the left subtree. So shifting this down. Now we can see we process the left subtree first, then you process yourself, and then we process the right subtree. Oh, and let's not forget the recursive calls here. It shouldn't go to pre order, it should go to in order now. Perfect. Now let's call this from our main method. Going back to main method, this will be binary tree in order traversal. We pass the root node again. And let me just add some labels here. So here we are doing pre order, and here we are doing in order. Okay, so let's run this program. Now we already saw pre order, so let's check out in order now. This is our same tree, and this is the traversal result. So for in order, you process the left subtree first. So we started one, we go to left subtree, just two. Then we again go to the left subtree, which is at four. So we process four and print it. Then we backtrack. Now this node prints itself because its left subtree is processed. So it prints two. It has no right subtree, so it goes back. Now one has to print itself, which we see here. Now we go to the right subtree of one, which is at three. Now three has a left subtree, so we go towards five. Five has no left subtree, so five prints itself. Then we go to the right subtree from five, which is seven. Seven prints itself, and we backtrack all the way back to three. Now three's left subtree has been processed, so it prints itself. Next, we go to the right subtree of three, which is six, and six prints itself, and it backtracks all the way back. And this is the output that we expect. Okay, so now let's implement post order traversal. Again, copying this because I'm lazy, renaming this as post order changing the order of execution to process the left subtree first, then the right subtree, and then the current node, and calling post order as the recursive function. Now let's use this in our main method. We'll make this as post order, we'll change this to be post order, and that should be it. Let's run this. Great, we have the output. Now again, let's match it if it matches our expectation. So we start with one, but we first go towards the left subtree, which is two. We again go to the left subtree of two, which is four. So four prints itself. Now we go back to two. Two has no right subtree. So two now prints itself. We go back to one. Now one goes towards the right subtree, which is at three. At three, we go towards the left subtree at five. Five doesn't have a left subtree, so it goes towards right which is seven, and we print seven next. We backtrack, we go to five. Five has processed all of its subtrees, so it prints itself next. Now we backtrack again, go back to three. Now at three, we still have the right subtree to process, so we go towards right, and we print six, which is right here. Now we backtrack, we come back to three, and print out three. And then we backtrack all the way back to the one, and now that we have left and right subtree process, it's time to process itself and print one. So that's the basic implementation of all the three traversals that we talked about. Now, just like before, it doesn't make sense to pass the root to all of these traversal methods when it's already a property of binary tree. So let's see how we can refactor it. So going back to the binary tree, just like before for DFS, we'll have to keep whatever methods we have here. Let's make them private because I don't think these methods need to be invoked from outside this class. And let's start with one function at a time. So we grab pre-order traversal and I'll scroll to the top. I usually like my public methods to be written first and then private methods because it just helps with readability. 
when you go through a class. So here I'll paste the definition that we had before and I'll make this a public method. This doesn't have to take in any known as an input and this can call the private pre-order method that we've defined further down and pass root, which we already have as property of this class. Similarly, we can do the same thing for the other two traversals. So doing this for in order first, and then we do this for the post order. So let's go back to our main method and update this as well. You can see the IDE is already complaining a lot. So let's remove where we pass the root of the binary tree to this method. It's not required anymore. Okay, perfect. Let's run this program again and make sure the output is good. I'm not going to go through all of these output again. I'm not going to put you through the pain again, but I'm hoping that the output is the same as before. And if it's not the same, please post it in the comments so that we can debug this. And now our binary tree class looks very neat. It exposes four different methods for traversals. We have DFS, we have pre-order, in order and post order, which is a property of the binary tree class. And internally we define other private method which use recursion to implement all of these traversals and DFS. That was slightly exhausting, but at the same time, it was awesome, isn't it? So now given a tree, you know all kinds of traversals. You can do breadth first search, level order traversal, depth first search, and all the three types of traversals based on DFS. Now that we know the basics of how we can traverse trees in so many different ways, we can start working on more hard problems. And that's what will be coming next. Well, that's all I had for this video. I hope this helps you understand how DFS works and all the different traversal options that open up to you that uses DFS. And as usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and my Twitter, which is key underscore underscore strokes. And stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Happy coding. Thank you, everyone.